us for three weeks mm -hmm. from the University of Oslo. And he will now be giving five lectures on projective surfaces. Yeah. On projective surfaces, yes. 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 Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, five lectures on the geometry of, of projective surfaces. Uh, there might be a change towards the end. Uh, I might be talking about uh, apolarity instead, the last lecture, but we'll see. We'll see. Um, so, the title is Geometry of Surfaces, but the content of the lectures will be more specific. Uh, the surfaces will all be in P4. It would be surfaces in P4. And um, these surfaces will be um, smooth. And this P4 is complex um, projective space. So over the complex numbers all the time, okay? Smooth algebraic surfaces, projective surfaces in P4. So no, now already the first question should be why? Well, not why surfaces and what, not why uh, projective surfaces, but why in P4? Why are they interesting in P4? Well, um, so, let me just write it up. So, the reason is that, well, why I should add maybe this, uh, another thing here. Um, not only what, when do I want to look at some, some surfaces of, uh, in P4, I want to attack them all. I want to classify. I want to classify surfaces. So why classify? In particular surfaces to be four. Well that's because not every surface can be embedded in P4. Not every. So many, just like curves, if you think about algebraic curves, um, you have plane curves, and you have smooth plane curves, just given by one polynomial, um, but not every curve can be embedded in the plane. Similarly, not every surface can be embedded in P4. So you want to know which ones can be embedded in P4. And um, so for curves in the plane there are very severe uh, restrictions. You know that the genus, so curves in the plane, then the, the degree, so of degree D, has genus d minus 1 over 2, right? So the degree and the genus must, must match these two numbers, right? So not every genus even uh, appears. But for sur so similar things happen for, for surfaces. Similar things happen for surfaces that we will come back to um, very soon. And on the other hand, uh, that's not enough for me just to say that the, the, they should be classified because there are not so many. The other side is that um, P4 is a very nice playground to study the geometry. Get the equations, linear systems, 
etc. of these surf of surfaces. Of course you have the extra condition that they have to be embedded in before, but anyway this is a good playground. And this is going to be the aim of, uh, of this series of lectures, to see how studying P surfaces in P4 can, can um, uh, be a good practice in, in studying <coughs> the geometry of surfaces. Yes? That's right. So every curve can be embedded in P3. Is there every surface can be embedded in P100, but also P5. Also P5. So you take the dimension and uh, multiply the dimension by 2, the twice the dimension plus 1 is always enough always enough, ok and uh, the basic reason which we will come back to very quickly is that whenever you take, have a variety x in some huge dimension space, uh, huge projective space, this is of dimension small n say then you look at all the secants all the secants all the secant lines to x union of all the lines so such a line is given by two points on x and then you get the span so two points, there's two twice n and then the line is, is one more dimension so this has dimension 2n plus 1 ok and as soon as the space here is bigger than that there is a point outside all the secant lines when you project from that point you can get an embedding the projected uh, variety is still embedded that's why you can get down to this dimension Okay. so um, but to go on from here I need to to have some notation. So I put the notation over here. So my surface is called uh, most of the time just S. And um, so let's see. H will be a hyperplane divisor. The intersection of the surface in P4. So this is a curve also. So sometimes I will call it a the curve and sometimes just a divisor. Okay? Um, pi is going to be the genus the genus of the curve. Since S is smooth I can choose a hyperplane section which is also hyperplane uh, divisor which is also smooth and then this is the genus of that curve otherwise it would, would be arithmetic genus but th that's the genus of hyperplane section now chi is going to be the Euler characteristic and k is going to be the canonical divisor. Okay. So Uh, with that I also need to, I will do that over the here I guess, I need to put up a few basic facts that I will use also, this is almost notational. Um, so one is the adjunction formula. See on the so if D is a divisor 
a curve D is a divisor or a curve on S then the genus of D if it's smooth um, I'm sorry so 2G minus 2 2 times the genus minus 2 is equal to um, D times D plus K so this is with the intersection product on the surface so when you take two divisors on the surface you have an intersection number and when you take these and this intersection intersection number here then you get this thing which is what is a little bit more important actually is that if you take d plus k the divisor class d plus k on the surface and restrict this to the curve d then you get the canonical divisor the canonical sheaf on the curve this is a canonical canonical divisor on the curve so this was the canonical divisor on the surface to get the canonical divisor on the curve you use this use this thing here and this will be important for us because we'll see when we, look, when we study uh, the geometry on the surface we will often restrict to curves on the surface we will often restrict to curves the last thing that goes over goes in here is the um, riemann rock which is the other characteristic of OS of D which is 1 half D times D minus K plus chi So this I also, also will use quite often. So now that was notation. Let's get to some of the restrictions. I said there's some class, some restrictions being embedding or being embedded in P4. <coughs> and the first restriction is a numerical restriction. So numerical restriction exactly of the same nature as the one that we had over here for the curve, the plane curve. A relation here it was just a relation between the degree and the genus. Now it would be something uh, similar, something a relation between all numerical invariants on the, on the surface. And uh, this restriction comes from the following um, fact if you have a surface in P4 and you look at the self intersection self intersection of this surface you think of this surface intersecting itself well then you get the whole surface but intersection theory according to Fulton give you a number because uh, the surface has co-dimension 2 so a surface in P4 has co-dimension 2 and then the intersection of two surfaces in P4 will always be a number in particular if you intersect the surface with itself you get the number and um, then if this surface is smooth then you get the number as C2 of the normal bundle C2 of the normal bundle so 2 is for the co-dimension and N is the normal bundle so I could have put here NS okay on the other hand, if the degree 
I didn't put that up here. D is going to be the degree all the way through. So this is the same as h squared as a divisor. Okay? Then, um, so this intersection number is at the same time equal to d squared. Because the class of the surface in P4 is the same as the class of d times a plane in the Chow ring. And then you take, intersect that with itself, you get d squared. And this is actually a numerical relation now, because if you compute C2 of the normal bundle, and I will just write it up, then this is actually 10d plus 5hk plus 2k squared minus 12k equal then to d squared. Okay. So this is a relation. This is the relation. Actually, if you take a any surface and map it into P4, say by projection, then normally you would get some double points because your projection center will intersect this secant variety. You will get some double points. And the number of double points you can compute from this formula also. If you take d squared and subtract this number here, so you take this over on this side, then you get twice the number of double points for the map. So that's why this is also called the double point formula. Okay. But for, for us it's just going to be a restriction on the invariance of the surface. And you see we basically used all the invariants that are up here. By a junction pi is involved because that's d and hk all together. So d is h squared and hk. These are the ones that go into the adjunction. So that's the pi. So h squared, the degree is there. k squared is there. chi is there. Uh, and that's it. Okay. So that's a numerical restriction. There are many geometric uh, restrictions, but one of them is the more famous one. So let me start. Okay, the yes. So this, to get this formula, C two n to this polynomial. Yes. So if one knows Hartshorn chapter five, then that's true. Where yes. Is, why is this obvious? No, it's, it's certainly not obvious at all why this is so. Why, why to go, why this formula holds? So why the formula holds, this is, um, uh, this is Fulton chapter 6, <laughs> <laughs> you know, intersection <laughs> theory. <you know. laughs> One has to know Fulton's book chapter 6. Yeah, I mean, so because what they did was, they, that's right. That's right. I mean, that you can actually you have to construct the whole intersection theory to say that what is the self-intersection of something on the, on the surface. So if we take any variety inside the projective space or inside another variety, you can always take its self-intersection as soon as both are smooth, then this is well defined according to that theory. That's the point. So that's where this is. It's certainly... Um, so. Of course, that theory was then, um, well, his book was out in the 80s, and the theory was built in the 70s. This formula was used way before that as a double point formula. But, um, um, but not, not in this formulation. Not in this formulation. Okay.
so the other part here is slightly in that sense slightly more classical the geometric uh, restriction and name and that is the following and with that I will use also introduce some uh, notation so age not this is always going to be uh, the dimension of the space of whole global sections of, uh, let's see, I need to have enough parentheses here the space of global sections of uh, the hyperplane divisor this is always phi when the surface spans P4 unless <coughs> S is a Veronese surface exactly so this was so let me restate that this was Severi's theorem so of course a plane you can find a plane inside P4 but the plane does not span a spanning surface is a surface that is not contained in any hyperplane is not contained in any P3 so to make it simple for us you know I'm going to talk about only surfaces that span the whole thing right? and in that case the um, space of global sections is exactly 5 so this means that the linear system is a complete linear system you use all the devices that are, that are equivalent to H unless S is the Veronese surface in that case well if you think about the Veronese surface this lives normally in P5 that's a double embedding of the plane inside P5 we use the complete system of conic sections in the plane as your linear system and in this case here the secant the union of all the secants does not fill the whole space the dimension of this this thing here is 4 it's not 5 as you expect for a surface and this is the only smooth surface in P5 for which the secant variety does not fill the whole space and since it does not fill the whole space you can project from a general point down to P4 I will say a little bit more about this example because it's very important um, but that's that is the exception this is the only one So uh, to say that once more, if you have a surface and a space of section, a linear system of dimension, well, well, with more sections than five, then you can put the surface into a bigger space, and the map into P4 would have to be a projection from that bigger space. But then this says, then there are always double points, always double points unless you're in this particular situation here so you, this is a geometric thing but it actually gives you a numerical numerical restriction also okay so let me say a little bit more about the Bernie surface so here here I, I just ex tried to explain you know that this is the, uh, the secant variety has dimension 4 well if you think about the Veronese surface in uh, P5 then this is 
uh, the space of points P where the following matrix the rank of this matrix here at P um, equal equals one so the Vernier surface in P5 is where this 3 by 3 symmetric matrix has rank 1 here I have just all five, 6 variables filled in so I can think of this P5 then as the space of all conics and the rank 1 conics are the points on the Vernier surface Okay. And now the secant variety is just a set of points where the rank of the same matrix is less than or equal to 2. Because any a secant line is a line through two points and if I add two matrices of rank 1 then you get rank 2 at most so everything on this line will have rank 2 so that's the second variety and you get them all by this by, by this thing here and rank less than or equal to 2 means this is determined by the determinant of this matrix so that's a cubic hypersurface so that's why this second variety is four dimensional So, I think I will erase this also. But I will add, so in my talks here, I will talk mostly about these, the first examples, because there's lots to say, you know, about all these, all of them and then uh, go through all kinds of techniques that we can use to, to analyze these surfaces. So a little, little bit more actually about Vernier surfaces. So this was the Vernier surface in P5. Now since the secant variety doesn't fill the P5, I can project. I get the exception for this thing. So how can I naturally find the Vernier su surface in P4. So here is a way you should ha have in mind. So in P4, if we start with C, a rational normal quartic curve, A rational normal quartic curve. Then I will explain to you how you can find the Vernier surface associated to this curve. So the way I will do that is I will think of P4 as the space of all polyno binary polynomials of degree uh, 4. So binary forms So modulo scalars here. So I have P4. These forms, binary forms of degree 4. So these are two variables, but it's homogeneous forms. So I think of it slightly simpler. I think of them as polynomials in one variable polynomials in one variable of degree 4 such a polynomial has over C four roots right four roots so the general polynomial has exactly four roots so 
I can factor it and I get these linear factors, right? Four different groups. And now, but inside here, I have some with three different roots, one double root and two simple roots. I have some with two double roots, like that, and I have some with three, a triple root and a simple root. And finally, I have the pure powers. One root of multiplicity four. This curve here is exactly this locus. This curve here is exactly this locus. This locus here is exactly a projected Veronese surface. You see, you get a two, for any two points in C, which is a P1, for any two points in P1, you get such a pair, right? So, of course, you have this curve inside there. In the closure of these, you get this guy. But that's all. And uh, so this is kind of the symmetric product. this thing. So this is a P2. This is the way I think of it. Uh, and if you think of it geometrically, you have this curve C, and then um, whenever you have two planes that have triple tan uh, triple uh, so you have tangent lines and you have oscillating planes an oscillating plane has triple contact with the curve. If you have, whenever you have two such things, two oscillating planes, they will meet in a point. The two oscillating planes, because any two planes in P4 will also meet in a point. A unique point. So for any two oscillating planes, you get an intersection point. And the collection of all those intersection points, that's again exactly this V. That's exactly this V. Okay. Again you get this symmetric product. Thing. Okay. Of course one could go on and talk about the Bernese surface, but now we'll go to the more general classification. Any questions, of course? So let's so let's start let's start the classification. And we start um, by degree. So, first we go with degree 3, which is the minimal degree. Why is that the minimal degree? Well, so the surface should span. The smooth surface should span. And so, um, whenever you intersect, so remember the degree is also the number of intersection points between S and a general plane. Okay. 
T is a intersection number, inter number of intersection points between S and a general plane. Because a general plane, that's just the intersection of two hyperplanes, and the intersection of two hyperplanes on S is this D. That's the same. Okay? So now, if the surface spans P4, the intersection with a general plane must span this plane. So the, num the points in that plane must span the plane. And therefore you need at least three. That's why three is the minimal. Okay. And now, uh, so I have my surface S and I project from a point I project the surface from a point then the degree drops the degree drops so this I get so S into S bar now inside P3 It used to be of degree 3, so it's degree less here, so it can only be 2. It couldn't be 1, because then it would be a plane, right? So it's only 2. And quadrics we know. So this is a, this is a quadric. In particular, it's a quadric scroll. Therefore, this is a cubic scroll. A cubic scroll. So, um, I think you may be familiar with this, this, these cubic scrolls before, otherwise come and ask. Uh, so minimal, varieties of minimal degree in all dimensions, this is the favorite classification of all time in a way. So this has been done, done over and over again in so many characterizations of, surf of varieties of minimal degree. So this belongs exactly to this list. Okay, so maybe I should add a few of these um, invariants for that guy. Well, we have, as I said, degree 3, and we have sectional genus equal to 0. Just like for the quadric surface, if you cut it, the cubic scroll, you get the twisted cubic curve. Let's move on to degree 4. In degree 4 we already saw one surface. We have the Veronese surface. And the Veronese surface has sectional genus 0. So now let's see if there's something else. Well, let's take, well we could take a projection again before writing that up. If you take a projection of this surface of degree 4, you get the surface in P3. If you take a projection from a point on the surface, you get the surface of degree 3 in P3, a cubic surface, a del Pezzo surface, so then it's reasonable to say that there's this um, if it's not a Vernier surface then the degree 4 surface should be a Del Pezzo surface okay. but let's do it slightly differently if you, like, if you take a hyperplane section a hyperplane section the hyperplane section is um, a curve of degree 4 
the smooth curve of the degree 4 and p3. There are not so many of those. So one of them we already saw here. If you take a section of the Vernier surface, you get a quartic curve. That's the same as taking this guy here and project it from P4 to P3. You get a quartic curve. But that is already a projection. And we're done by this theorem that I erased here. We're done with uh, those that can be projected. So here I really want something that is uh, not projected. So that's the other possibility, namely that this is an elliptic curve. namely a complete intersection of two quadrics in particular pi equal to one pi equal to one and since, so this description here of this elliptic curve already indicates another way of seeing, approaching these things. You see, this elliptic curve is a complete intersection of two quadrics in, the, in P3. You take two quadric surfaces in P3, you get the intersection is this elliptic curve. So, how could such a thing be a hyperplane section of a surface? Well, why don't we just do exactly the same in P4? Take uh, two general quadrics and intersect them. So, complete intersection. Um, two two in P four this surface S is then just a complete section upstairs so this is the way you get it and in fact this surface is in fact a del pezzo surface so it is in fact as I indicated first you know if you project from a point you get a cubic this is in fact such a thing So, so already we've seen a few cases here. I haven't so I haven't um, given you all the arguments why there is nothing else. I've just given you examples so far. We'll come back to some of the rest of the arguments on the way. But um, as I indicated, the first case here is special because it's the very neat surface. And you can see that also by looking at the hyperplane section, that curve, it is already a projected curve. A rational quartic curve in P3 is already projected from P4. So therefore the surface must have been projected into P4. And the second case here 
is then the remaining case of a smooth quartic curve in P3, namely the complete intersections, the two two intersections. So it's a general fact that if you have a surface and the general curve, the general hyperplane section is the complete intersection, then the surface itself is a complete intersection. And this goes a little bit further, it actually goes into arithmetically Kolmikoli. Uh, if the curve is arithmetically Kolmikoli, then the surface is also that. And we'll go through that a little bit more carefully in a little bit. But, um, but I wanted to say a couple of other things first. Well, let me just complete the... So why can I, go, can I not go up to uh, genus 2? Well, that's because there is no curve in P3, that fills P3 of genus 2. So that's where it stops. So, Let's see. Yeah, I will take then, I will then uh, go through the argument with the complete intersection and arithmetically Comicoli cases. So, this involves some cohomology. Uh, but it also involves um, an important uh, organization of equations, namely the Hilbert Birch theorem. So, um, in the plane, if you have a set of points in the plane, if you have a set of points in the plane, there is always the ideal of this set of points is always generated by the maximal minors of a matrix. The ideal of that set of planes, set of points in the plane is always generated by the maximal minors of a matrix. And the dimension of that matrix is n times n plus 1 for some n. So the difference of the two dimensions is exactly 1. Very general statement, but extremely important statement. So that's why I'm saying it once more. Any set of points in the plane has a defining ideal generated by the maximal minors of a matrix where the size is n times n plus 1. So um, a surface in P4 is then arithmetically Comicoli if it is again defined by the maximal minors of a matrix of dimensions n and n plus 1. So I, I said for any points in the plane you can always do that for the surfaces in P4 or for the curves in P3 for that matter also in co-dimension 2 in those two cases the, the, the first statement doesn't hold yet but still both curves and in P3 and surfaces in P4 may have, may have the same property that their ideal is generated by the maximal minors of such a matrix. And these are in many ways the simplest surfaces in P4 from an equational point of view. So which ones, which one of the three types of surfaces that we have so far are of this kind? Well, here, a complete intersection, this, the ideal of this surface is generated by the maximal minors of a matrix of size 1 times 2. 1 times 2, right? Over here, the cubic scroll is, has an ideal generated by the maximal minors of a matrix in this case, the dimensions is, are 2 by 3. 
and the degrees I just put it in here as degrees are all ones in that case so the Veronese surface is an example of a surface which is not defined by the maximum and minors of a unique matrix okay so what is curious about the Vernier surface is that there is a there is a 3 by 5 matrix such that the 3 by 3 minors generate the ideal of the Vernier surface but this is this is a warning now this is a very special matrix and this is not the usual way of doing it, right? But this is actually a fact. You can find a matrix such that the 3 by 3 minors generate the ideal of this Vernier surface. If you take a general such matrix, you get the curve and not generated by the 3 by 3 minors, you get the curve and not a surface. So this is certainly in parentheses here. So those, the arithmetically called Macaulay surfaces, they are particularly easy and they are, um, they are, uh, so they are in a way building blocks in the classification. But I said, I started with points in the plane, they are always arithmetically called Macaulay, always defined by such a matrix. Curves in the space are sometimes, and surfaces in P4 even more seldom, anyway. So let's see, um, so if you have, so if a, if a general age in S, is arithmetically comicoli. Then, um, well, I should add a little bit here. Um, and age is non special. So I'm just using, I'm just using here the fact that is the ideal is generated by maximum minors but there is another there is another characterization that I always also will use just in a moment right? an age non special this means that age 1 of os of age is equal to 0 then S is ACM so what I really what he's asking for is is another characterization so um, age is ACM then the age one of the ideal sheaf of H twisted by K <coughs> is equal to zero for all K and I think this is if and only if and similarly um, S is ACM if and only if H one um, H I I H of I'm sorry here is S is zero for um, for all K and I equal to one and two. So I is the ideal ideal sheaf 
I is the ideal sheaf and so what this says here is well if you look at the curve look at the curve then you will have cohomology for I in, in the zeroth term and the second term but in the middle you may not have and it's arithmetic to common Macaulay if they have, have no cohomology for H1 and for surfaces no cohomology for H1 or H2 okay so if you have a complete intersection you have this absolutely and if you have something gen generated by maximal minors of uh, n by n plus 1 matrix you have also this all these cases so let me try to just indicate um, why this is so and I will do that by looking at the, an exact sequence I look at IS of K minus 1 IS of K this is just multiplication by the hyperplane section and then here I get IH of K and now I look at cohomology and this is why my way of writing this I just look at the whole table and under here I write the number of sections for age naught there's an age one age two etc and this is if this is exact then you get alternating sum equal to zero right so what this here means what this here means is that you have zero here always right H1 of the ideal sheaf of H twisted by K is always zero you may have something different from zero up here at the H0 level but H1 is always zero right okay so therefore if I can find one just one twist here where I have a zero if I have one twist with a zero here then automatically it will have zero in the middle right and then I can use that zero to get and then twist the whole thing by one get a zero there and a new zero etc so if I hold, have only one zero here, I get zeros all the way from the, that on, from there on. And that zero there is what you have from the Severi theorem. Severi theorem says that the surface is not projected. Severi theorem says that H1 of IS of 1, of H is, yeah, of 1 here. This is zero. That's the very theorem. The only exception to this is the Bernier surface. So then we have a zero, and therefore we get zeros all the way up. Okay. Similarly, if I have this, I ask for um, age one OS of age to be zero. That's the same as saying that age one of uh, H2 that this guy here is zero H2 and if that is true then since over here 
Um, uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I really meant here, uh, this guy here, right. So th this linear system should be non-special on the curve. And therefore I would get the zero there. I'm sorry. And then you can use the same argument again. If you have just one zero, you get zeros all the way. And if you twist far enough in one direction or the other direction, you will have zeros down here. So therefore, you get the results. So since my time is, is running out here, I have to almost stop, but I have to leave you with a problem. I have to leave you with a problem because I said why why did we why do we st study surfaces in P4 not every surface can be embedded so let me take two minutes to pose a problem show that P2 blown up in three points cannot be embedded in P4. Joyce cannot be embedded in P4. And just as a reminder or a hint, you know that if S is blown up in three points, you have three exceptional divisors. And if you have any divisor here on, on S, then this H here can be written as some A times a line. So I, L here is the pullback of a line. Minus B1, E1 minus b2 e2 minus b3 e3 so it's actually characterized by these three these four numbers the degree the degree is the self-intersection here and the self-intersection is a squared from the first part and then since these are exceptional of the first kind they have minus one curves I get b1 squared minus b2 squared minus b3 squared and this is the degree And now the uh, canonical divisor is minus 3L plus the exceptional ones so now I've given you almost all the numeric invariants except for one and that's chi so chi of S is the same as the chi of of the plane this is one so here we have now all the numerical invariants of such a surface 
you do have the double point formula the numerical restriction can you figure out a proof why such a surface cannot be embedded that's the problem and I'll talk about this also on Wednesday okay okay that's it for today questions can I yes. make one uh, absolute yes so especially to the students don't get mad like this uh, his office is on the first floor and go and bug him and ask him questions mm -hmm. all the time yeah, yes all the time, all the time. So yes feel free to visit yes. and ask him more questions so if you don't know what the canonical divisor is then come and ask if you don't know the intersection number come and ask <laughs> yes and pi you know pi is not 3.14 it's some genus in this case right <laughs> so we go all the, all the way and here I have some um, some of my papers 